Alright folks, so we had another request for a variation of the teleport tutorial, so this time they wanted something kind of like Apex. I think I think that's the one that has that girl in the white suit, throws her bangle and she can teleport to it, right? Probably should have looked that up, but yeah, something like that where you throw something and then you can teleport to its location instead of selecting it or having a predetermined actor, so... So it would be able to fire and then teleport to its location after you press the button again. You can wait a minute. Yeah, it made it. Alright, cool. So let's jump on over to a clean project and see how it's done. Now I got a clean project here, and the only thing that I have done in this. Is I've gone into the event I'm in a first person uh, preview or template whatever uh, and I've gone in to the spawn projectile graph and I've just turned the volume way down on that because I, I didn't want to blow y'all's ears out so that's all I've done so far so in order to do this I'm gonna go in the blueprints folder I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna create a blueprint class of an actor I'm gonna call it TP grenade underscore BP and I'm gonna open it up I'm gonna add a sphere and I'm gonna set it as the default root because it's gonna need to have physics enabled and physics only applies to the default scene root anything else doesn't get hit by it but uh so we want this to simulate physics then we want to add a projectile movement and I'm gonna default its initial speed and max speed to a thousand but whatever you set this to is basically how fast it'll fly through the air I'm gonna leave its gravity alone just because I want it to be able to bounce and then go from there. Alright, this is basically all we need for that one. So in the first person character, I'm going to add a right mouse button event. And then I'm going to add a variable on the side called TP Grenade. And I'm going to make it I'm going to click the little drop down thing and set its variable type to an object reference of the blueprint that we just made. Because after I compile, I'm going to drag it out and I want to see if it's valid. So, is valid. And this will check to see if it already exists in the world. If it's not valid, then we want to spawn actor from class. The class being that TP grenade we just made. For the spawn transform I'm just going to go up here to where they already are spawning the projectile at the gun and I'm just gonna copy all that. But for a quick rundown it's just basically getting the sphere location which the sphere in our character is right here at the end in their gun. So it's getting its location we're making a transform out of its location and the gun offset which is already right here so it's rotating based on the offset and then it's getting the world rotation of the first person camera and applying that to the rotation and for the scale I'm going to drag off this sphere right here and get scale I'm going to get its world scale yeah oh this is all right, that, that'll work. I'm just gonna kind of select all that. Control C, and I'm gonna move it down. But I'm gonna delete that off this top one because I don't think it needs it up there. So we spawn the actor. We want it to fire from the same place. So you would fire this from wherever you're wanting your grenade to be thrown, or wherever you're, whatever you're using to launch your projectile you would just make that the transform instead of this. I'm just using this for demonstration. 
Then we're going to drag out that reference and we're going to set it. So that the one we just spawned is now a reference. So that when we click this button again, it'll say it is valid. Now what do you want to do? So we're going to drag it out and we are going to get the actor's location. Then we'll drag off the location and promote the... Oh, no, 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 no. We will do that, but not yet. So the actor location, we're going to do vector plus vector. Just to make sure that we don't end up spliced into the ground or anything like that. So I'm just going to add a little bit to it so that you jump above. Because otherwise you can be just wherever the actor is. So you'll see that the sphere kind of goes through this grid right here. And so does the character. So if we teleport this character to this exact location, then it'll be like halfway in the ground. So we set it just a little bit above by adding to that Z vector. The Z vector is the up down vector in the world. So now I'll drag out that variable I accidentally made after I rename it to TP target point. So if this is valid, then we want to get its location, add a little bit to it so that we're not clipped into the ground, and then we can just go ahead and destroy it. Destroy the actor. I hit record, right? Okay. Hey, when I space out like that. I'm like, wait, I pushed that button, right? Alright, then we destroy the actor and we will set actor location. You can really just hook that up right there, but I don't like really having the wires cross too much, so I'm just going to drag that out. Plus, it's good to have it as a variable just in case you want to, um, you know, alter it a little bit further later or you need to reference it again or you know. but I like making it look clean like that and I'm gonna set teleport since it's teleporting now you could do like on the other videos to where we lerp through a timeline and then get there for this one I'm just gonna set it up like that Oop. yeah Whew. you can make it go a little bit faster so if you want it to launch like really far really fast boom Kind of fun to play with. Oh, okay. I, <laughs> I killed him. Anyway, so that's pretty much that. So you just spawn the actor, you'll get its location, and then teleport straight to it. So just yeah, you copy that, and it'll just yeah. So yeah, hope it, this helped you out, my friend, and I'll see you all in the next one.